Good morning. Uh, today, uh, the, during the last 30 years, there have been uh, enormous changes concerning how knowledge work is being done. 30 years ago, it usually took place at an office. But uh, as you know, during, uh, because of the uh, development of PCs, digital devices, a uh, workplace is not what it used to be. And most of us have uh, digital devices in the pocket, and we can do most of uh, our work almost anywhere. But this study is about um, physical workplaces. And, the, um, and um, as Matt said, that um, students can be a good proxy for knowledge workers because they, they, uh, they do much of the same tasks and they are definitely the knowledge workers of the future. So this study is about physical workplaces. And, um, as you know, you have uh, office landscapes with large areas with many desks. You have uh, group offices, smaller offices. And, and you have combined offices and you have activity-based working where the idea is that you can change workplace depending on your task. In this case, we used uh, one of the new Norwegian universities as a, as a case because they are more space efficient than the traditional universities. At the traditional universities, most graduate students, they have their own designated workplace. But at the, at the new universities, where you usually uh, educate undergraduate students, you don't have, can't afford that luxury. You have quite few square meters per student and per employee. So the, so the, uh, the working conditions are a bit different from the classic universities. And, uh, and these new universities have many similarities with many new workplaces where you have, where you have uh, hot seating systems and hot des desking systems that uh, you don't have a designated workplace, you have a clean desk policy. So, so, the, so the, this is a proxy for that. So what we tried to figure out was how, how do these students spend their time before lectures, between lectures, and after lectures, when they do their own their self-studies. What, what, what is important? And uh, what we tried to figure out, what, what were the most important indoor climate parameters for these uh, students? Because um, the well-being standard gives, uh, gives us uh, an idea about the comfort ban for air quality, for instance, with temperature, CO2, etc. We know that, for instance, if the CO2 level exceeds 800 ppm, many people will experience sick building syndrome. We also know that uh, with noise, there's a big research that shows that uh, introvert persons, for instance, are more influenced by noise than extroverts. So noise is important. But uh, a too quiet area is also problematic because, for instance, uh, human speech is very disturbing if you can halfway hear what people are talking about and it grabs your attention. So in some areas, it's actually preferable with some noise. We also know that uh, light, lighting is very important because it influences your mood and it influences your circadian rhythm. And um, especially in the, in the Nordic countries or in Northern Europe, where you have the dark winters, lighting is very important for how people actually work. Uh, another thing we are, that's also important at workplaces, is cleaning. And um, as many of you know, it's not the dust that you see that is dangerous, but it's the small particles that you can't see that is dangerous for your health. So cleaning is also important. And the, the case we did do it during that study, there was uh, Rebecca Sjølingstad Olsen and um, Hanne Moit Vågen that collected this data during uh, spring 2018. That we used uh, uh, a particular building at the university as a case where uh, this building houses uh, engineering students and business school students. And these two groups of students are good cases because uh, their uh, t 
teaching, their educations are quite different organized. The engineering students, they usually they, uh, they attend the university every day. They start the morning with a lecture, they are given tasks, which they work with during the day, and then they wrap up every day, usually with a lecture, late in the afternoon. The business school education is uh, organized quite differently. They usually have three to four lectures a day, and they don't, many business school students don't attend the university at a daily basis. So then we had to figure out how to, how to, uh, to investigate this. Usually when you, uh, when you make uh, surveys, you use uh, questionnaires with what we call a Likert scale, Likert scales, where you choose, for instance, uh, one to five, one to seven, to indicate whether something is good or bad. The problem with the Likert scale questionnaires is that it's quite difficult to get an idea about what is not that important, what are people indifferent about. It gives you a quite good idea about what is important and what is not so important. Huh? Yeah, I will change. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is important, what is not so important, but it don't give you a good idea about this, what, what are indifferent about. But this is taken care of by, um, by Louvier et al., some Canadians. They, um, they figured out um, a system called best worst scaling that takes care of this. And that's a method that is quite com commonly used in, uh, in, uh, in the hotel industry. Airlines use that. So the idea is that uh, you give people a list of options, and then they choose what is the best option and what is the worst option and the rest you are basically indifferent about. And this best or scaling gives you very valid data. But the trouble is that the data you get are not usually not normal distributed. So then we have to use to analyze this, you have to use non-parametric statistics, or you, you have to use, um, you use uh, log, log models. And in this case, we did so. We, we, uh, the students handed out uh, questionnaires, we get in 215 answers, and because people are not used to this format, we only get 186 valid answers, because uh, they had to uh, only tick off one of, uh, of each uh, alternative, good alternative, bad alternative, in, in, in the list of options. And uh, what we found? that in table one, we, the students are asked what are the most and least valid indoor qualities when they do concentration work. What we found here was that uh, the most valued thing was ventilation. We were not that surprised because this building where this survey took place was initially built as an office building for some hundred people. But when used as a university, in worst case you can have several thousand people at the same time in this building. So we know that uh, the ventilation system was inadequate. And we have later been doing measurements in this building, and we have found that uh, in some, some days during the peak hours, the, the, the CO2 values may exceed 800 ppm. So we know that is a problem. The second thing that was most valued, as, as you see here, you have the, you have the most valued, the least valued, and, and the important thing, you have the indifferent, indifferent alternative. And we, we, we calculated the rank as the most valued minus the least valued. And then we saw by far that ventilation was most important, then we had noise, then we had lighting, and then we had cleaning. And then we run the statistics on this. We used the man witney u test, where we had two categories, and uh, Kruskal Wall is one way ANOVA, when we had uh, several alternatives. In this case, uh, these findings are quite strong, because uh, the, the questionnaire was handed out to, to students that used all the floors in this building. There was no difference between the floors. The only significant difference we found in this case was concerning cleaning. We found that it, uh, students who spent much time in the building. They're more concerned about the cleaning than students 
that uh, only visited occasionally, which gives sense. What we also found was that uh, engineering students, about half of them spend five to six days a week in this building. While well, the business school students, they only uh, half, half of them spend three to four days per week. But that's because how this teaching is organized. We also asked the students, if you could improve this building, what would you do? In table two, again then, ventilation was a top choice. They, then they were also asked about group rooms, because most uh, workplaces for students here are like uh, office landscapes. At the, at the fourth place, we had noise and cleaning. And here we found also that uh, engineering students were less concerned with, uh, with uh, quiet rooms than uh, business school students. And we also found significant uh, we found a significant differences concerning the samples because we made one sample in March during the ordinary semester and in May during the exam season when it's quite crowded. And then ventilation was more highly valued. Finally, we asked the students uh, which place do they usually sit at. And they're definitely the most popular choice. To our surprise, was the table in the corridors. By far. Group rooms were also popular, and the uh, and, uh, library and the canteen was the least popular alternative. And again, here we found uh, significant differences. Because um, the, 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 the business school students were less negative to use of the library than the engineering school students, but the engineering school students, they have a lot of group work. We also found that um, the engineering students were also more positive to use of the, of the tables in the, in the corridors. But there were no differences between the floors, so these findings are quite strong. So what are the take-home messages here? The first thing we see is that uh, business school students and, uh, and uh, engineering school students, they behave quite differently. The engineering school students, they spend almost every day here. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the business school students, they just sit down, do the work, and go for the lectures. And then many of them work, have work in addition to the, to the, to the studies. But the take-home message here is that ventilation is very important. And at least in Norway, it's quite difficult to change the ventilation system when it's first installed. So if, if, if one can get an adequate ventilation system in the building, that is a necessary but not sufficient condition that the, 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 the users become happy. What we also found that was that the students prefer these semi-quiet areas, the, the tables in the corridors. Some students prefer the quiet library, but very few students prefer the canteen, which is quite noisy. And it also seems that students can circulate. So we think the take-home message here is that if you have limited space, then activity-based working seems to be a quite good idea, that given the, the, that you have the opportunity actually to move around and to choose to choose uh, workplace according to the, to the tasks, that you have some quiet corners where if you have to concentrate, and you have places where you can discuss during work, because knowledge work is, uh, is both cognitive and it's social. So thank you for your attention. Thank you.